Today, interesting interview on TYT interviews for you guys with Dr. Christopher Keating. He's the guy who put up $10,000 recently, actually a little bit more than that, uh, to try to figure out, hey, is there any way that you can prove scientifically that climate change is not happening and it's not man-made? Well, well, if you can, you can collect that $10,000 from uh, Dr. Keating, and by the way, $10,000 from the Young Turks, and $10,000 from Jimmy Dore, because we decided to triple down on his offer, and we want to talk to him today about the offer. He's uh, Previously taught physics at the University of South Dakota, at the U.S. Naval Academy, and the U.S. Coast Guard Academy. Uh, Dr. Keating, great to have you on the Young Turks. Thank you. Glad to be here. So uh, you've written a book, Undeniable Dialogues on Global Warming, and uh, now you've got this website, di Dialogues on Global Warming. Blogspot.com. So explain to the audience uh, what exactly the offer is for uh, the ten thousand dollar, now thirty thousand dollar reward, uh, along with the Young Turks. Actually, this uh, challenge has been around for a while. I started it, uh, I think, back in 2007 in response to a challenge that was made by JunkScience.com to go and prove global warming was real. And so I started this, and it was actually back in 2007. Uh, went away for a little while, and then I restarted it in uh, 2012. Um, and the challenge was in response to people I keep hearing saying that global warming isn't real and they can prove it. I say, fine, you've made a claim, I'm giving you an opportunity to do that. And that's really what the challenge is all about. And so where do people submit their claims and how does the process work? Well, they submit them to the blog. Uh, you mentioned it, dialogues uh, on globalwarming.blogspot.com. And so they could submit it as a comment there. And once I receive it as a comment, I I set it up as a as a new page, and I put their submission in, and then I put my response. Uh, right now, I have a long queue of them. I'm getting to them as quickly as I can. Uh, I've received over 50 of them in the last month, uh, and I've responded to 30 some on. So I'm uh, like 18, 19 to go. Okay, and what what's the most common type of entries? Do they actually uh, offer scientific proof? Uh, there are some that uh, are pretty good. Some of them have some real science to them. Uh, some of them are just crazy. Uh, I think one of the weirdest ones I received was someone submitted a link to a George Carlin comedy video. Uh, George Carlin is a really funny guy, and I really liked his comedy stunts, but you know, he wasn't a climate scientist. You don't uh, think? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the most common one I hear all the time is, well, the climate changed in the past, and they just leave it at that. So the obvious uh, assumption is, well, it changed in the past, so this must be a natural change today. And they don't give any kind of evidence or proof to support that claim. Yeah, one of my favorites uh, I saw recently where a conservative said, well, you know, the planet warmed uh, when the dinosaurs were around, and then it survived. I was like, yeah, it did, but the dinosaurs didn't. <laughs> so, right, right. <laughs> little details. You leave out those kind of details. <laughs> so um, now, I'm sure that people uh, that are you know looking forward to taking up this challenge or who don't agree with you or us think, come on, look, you're the arbiter of this uh, challenge. You're never going to agree to give up your own ten thousand dollars, and you're never going to agree that you were wrong. So they're going to be skeptical about that. So what do you say to that? And what scientific analysis are you using uh, to show that, look, if you can pass this muster, I will actually give you the money? The challenge isn't on me to prove that global warming is real. My challenge is to go and take their proof and show how it's not a valid proof. And so they go and they write up their proof. Some of them are much more detailed than others. Uh, and then they submit it to me. And then I go and I look at their submission and I look for ways that it is valid or it isn't valid. And I critique it on those that criteria. So if they submit something and it is scientifically valid all the way through, and it demonstrates that man-made global warming isn't real, they win. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. So far, no one has come even close. So you're saying it is conceivable. You're open to the idea that it can be proven in some way. You just haven't seen the data that would lead you in that direction. Well, I'm a scientist, so I have to go where the science is. I'm certainly open to the idea that there is proof that man-made global warming is not real. 
do I think it's out there? No, I don't. I've, I've really been involved with this for a long time. Uh, I've really studied it, read scientific papers, and uh, the science is just so overwhelming that I'm very skeptical that anyone could do it. But if they can, I'm open to, to see it. So, uh, you know, we often quote that number, 97% of the world's scientists uh, agree that there's man-made uh, global warming. Uh, so how about the other 3%? Like, w w what do they claim? Is it? I know that there's a lot of guys who, are, of course, get money from some of the energy groups, so they come up with some questionable science to back up their claims. But is there a legitimate part of that 3% and, and why are they holding out against the other 97%'s data? Well, let's be clear about the 97%. It was 97% of published climate scientists. And that is a, an important distinction because uh, what the, the skeptics are saying is they'll go and find some biologist somewhere and say, hey, this, this biologist doesn't believe in global warming. And so they use that to go and try and, and, and uh, tear away at that 97%. What we're talking about are the people who are most involved with climate scientists, the ones that are doing research and publishing papers on the subject. 97% of them believe in man-made global warming. As for the other 3%, uh, what, yeah, I don't want to really speak uh, for their minds exactly why they believe in what they believe in. Certainly some of them are getting paid. Uh, there is a long chain of, of, of money flowing along. Uh, the fossil fuel industry is supplying about $70 million a year to uh, denier organizations. And so there's a lot of funding for these guys to come out and say that man-made global warming is not real. Uh, some of them, are there some that uh, are saying it and are not getting money? I'm sure there is. Why they want to believe that man-made global warming isn't real, uh, well, I can't really say to that. Right. So what are you hoping to accomplish with this challenge? What do you think, you know, if at the end of a year, or and is there a deadline on it, if what is it that you want the public to, to walk away with? Well, this thing exploded about a month ago. Like I told you, I've actually had it around for a long time, and then it suddenly exploded. And I'm finding uh, I'm spending literally my entire day addressing this. So I did put a deadline. July 31st is the deadline for submissions. And I promise that I will have everything responded to by the end of September. What do I hope to, to accomplish? My goal is not to go and change the mind of anyone who uh, rejects global warming. I, I do not believe it can be done. Uh, one of the things I do when, I, when people want to get into debates with me on this stuff, I ask them, is there anything I can do or say to change your mind? Is it possible for me to change your mind? And no one has ever told me yes. And so you know, if they say no, great, we just saved ourselves a lot of time. So there's nothing I can do about them. What I'm hoping to do is reach out to the people who haven't made their minds up. They're the ones who want to learn more about it. They're curious. They, ha they don't know what all is involved. And I want to be able to reach out to them and show them that the denier people are not the only ones that have the stage. Uh, they're driving away a lot of the scientists uh, from public uh, uh, conversation on this issue. And so they really have the stage to themselves, and I want to make sure that that, uh, that doesn't happen. So Dr. Keating, something interesting happened in the middle of this debate where the fossil fuel industry seems to have convinced some right-wing uh, religious folks, honestly, I would call a lot of them fundamentalists, that, that God is uh, not on our side. He's not on the side of science, he's not on the side of uh, acknowledging that there's man-made climate change. How did God even get involved in this? Uh, and why did they take that position? How it got involved, I really don't understand. Why they do it is pretty easy. Uh, they are looking for any way that they can get to people. And this happens to be one of those ways. There, there is a strong correlation between the people who uh, reject evolution in favor of creationism and people who reject global warming in favor of non-global warming. Uh, it's pretty much the same group of people. And so the people who want to go and slow down any kind of legislative actions, uh, they're looking for any way to go and, and get to people 
and help slow down any kind of actions because they're afraid they're going to lose a lot of money if we do something about it. So that's basically why it's done. You know, that's a, a, actually a really good point. If you're looking for a, a group of people who don't care about facts, reason, and logic, well, you know, religious folks, especially fundamentalists, obviously, are your perfect and natural constituency. <laughs> I mean, it seems like you can get them to believe almost anything. Because, and that goes to your point, Dr. Keating, about debating with them. If they say they're not open to your facts and that there's no way you can change their minds and they won't use reason, once you've escaped the bounds of reason, how do you communicate with someone and convince them of things if, if they won't even literally won't listen to reason? You can't. Uh, one of the things I say about the deniers is they have rejected science. There is no amount of science or evidence that can change their mind. Yeah, it's amazing to me. I mean, I guess since I operate in the sphere of reason, I don't know what it, I don't know how to communicate to someone that doesn't talk the same language. They go, okay, well, two plus two might equal four, but you're still wrong. I, okay, I don't know what to say to that. But I love that you're taking the effort to actually go and disprove every theory that's coming into your website and through these submissions and publishing it there. The Website is dialogues on globalwarming.blogspot.com. I mean, we had enough faith in you to put twenty thousand uh, dollars backing you as well. So uh, don't let us down, um, <laughs> but keep an open mind. Oh. We're, our offer is just as honest as as yours is. If you find something that's real, we're, we're more than happy to pay up. So far, I can tell you, your money has been completely safe. There's <laughs> been some. Uh, there's been some that have been honest efforts, but nothing that comes even close. All right, and wasn't there an offer for $1,000 uh, as well? What was that for, Dr. Yeah. Keating? Uh, I came because uh, I decided that that was a little bit too stringent. I said, if you don't even have to prove that man-made global warming is not real. If you can just give me some kind of scientific evidence that shows it's not real, then I'll pay you $1,000 for it. Some people have come back and shown some evidence that uh, there are other factors involved, and they want to say that this is proof that uh, man-made global warming or evidence that man-made global warming is not real. Well, no one's ever been saying that uh, man-made uh, gases are the only thing that are involved. So that's not evidence that man-made global warming isn't real. Uh, so, you know, right. yeah, there are other things involved. We know that. Yeah, of course. And uh, finally, um, I, I don't know what your family situation is, Dr. Keating, but uh, were they okay with you putting up your own money like that? Or were they like, hey, 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 big guy, take it easy? It's, it's more of the uh, big guy, take it easy type. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, uh, they, they're kind of wishing I had consulted with them before I did this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, so far it looks like their money and our money is safe. Uh, but like I said, keep an open mind, and we're uh, looking forward to seeing what happens through all the submissions on July 31st, and and looking to sh uh, to see what your responses to those submissions are. So, Dr. Uh, Christopher Keating, thanks for joining us in the Young Turks. Thanks for doing this, and thanks for at least trying to educate the public on the real science on this issue. Thank you. It's been my pleasure.